most tenants struggle with trying to figure out if renting versus buying is really the best financial decision for them. So today we're going to go over some of the key points that you need to keep in mind as you're kind of processing this financially for you and your family. Now, my name is George Moorhead with Bensley Properties, and today we're gonna go over rent versus buy, and kind of some of the methodologies to go through, and then we're also gonna go through a quick action plan, things you can do today that will help you tomorrow. All right, so let's just get on this. So rent versus buy. The first question that is always asked, and it is absolutely critical because our state has, well, our state has an excise tax at 1.7%, uh, 1.78%. Naturally, that's changing to a graduated scale. Uh, with that being in place, it costs you on average about two and a quarter percent of a sales price to sell a home. So that is one of the reasons that we consider how long will you be in the home to ensure that you've built up enough equity so that when you sell, you're not paying to sell the home, okay? So uh, three years, three years is really the minimum that you want to be in a home. Now, really, five years is best, okay? That gives you that little cushion and it ensures that, that you're gonna have some uh, you know, equity that you have earned, whether it's sweat equity or market appreciation, that you get that back to reinvest in your next home, all right? The next question is, do you also maintain your emergency funds? Emergency funds are, that's just a savings account, that's something that you might have, you're never gonna touch. I always recommend a minimum of six months. Stuff happens in life. So be prepared for it. If, you know, if some people say, well, you know, I've got my job, I've got L&I, I've got these other things. Okay, understand L&I is, it takes a while, and then two, you've got expenses in between them. <laughs> They've got to be paid. So always have six months of gross expenses. So if your gross expenses are $1,000 a month, you need to have in an account that you'll never touch $6,000 so that you have six months to make sure that you, you can pay your rent or your mortgage, you can pay your utilities, you can cover your housing costs. Whatever that amount is, you need to, if you haven't started, definitely set that aside. So you will have it. So you're not, you're not, you know, strapped, you know, in the event that something happens, you know, whether it's a car accident or you, you get hurt at work or, you know, you get really sick or something happens. I promise you, you will love, love, love that. All right. Okay. A down payment. Have you been saving for a down payment? Whether it's 3%, 5%, up to 20 plus percent. Okay. Uh, there are alternatives to look at, you know, for the folks that have a good credit score, that make a good income, uh, but, you know, with the rental costs and everything else, you might not be able to save all the money you need for a down payment. So, a down payment, the down payment grant program allows you to get 5% uh, down. There's no interest. There's no monthly payment for it. It's only due when you either refinance or when you sell the home. Okay. Well, there's a third one. Technically, if you go through the entire mortgage span, your last payment needs to pay off the, the balance, right? Okay. That's a given. That's like a, you know, selling a type of thing. But anyway, it allows you free money to go and get a home. Okay. Now, this isn't going to be a program for people who cannot manage their books monthly. Let's be very clear about that. Purchasing a home requires you to be a little bit smarter financially. So keep that one in mind. If you are running into the negative every single month in your checking account, uh, that's the first thing you need to fix, all right? Uh, before you ever consider purchasing a home, you need to be financially savvy. You have to set those things aside. We'll talk about a plan to get you there. All right, uh, making sure that you're always putting into retirement, all right? Not only, uh, it, it, not only for, when you retire, right, and not only what your company offers uh, or may or may not offer, but you're also putting that aside. And you should be putting and paying yourself, is what we say, at least 10% every single month. Preferably, you should be 25%. That's what you need to be paying yourself at a minimum uh, and, and, and so that you can retire. We will be able to meet with the financial, two of them to be exact financial planners, 
that are going to give you kind of their little synopsis of what to do versus what not to do. Uh, and depending on where you're at age-wise as far as going through the process, all right? The other thing is that we want to talk about, does your budget allow for uh, taxes, property taxes, and your, uh, the maintenance of the property? And then, of course, you know, your insurance. As an example, when we talk about maintenance, some folks are like, I hate condos, I hate townhomes because they have these homeowner's dues, okay? Well, understand that monthly payment covers the roof, covers the painting, covers, you know, landscaping, covers all of the things that you ultimately will be doing at either one point. In other words, homeowners associations, you pay it monthly, okay? Kind of like you should be setting reserves monthly for your for your for the maintenance of your home. Whereas a homeowner, you know, if they need a paint job every seven years, boop, seven years are gonna drop, you know, four thousand, six thousand dollars for an exterior paint job. Well, a homeowner's association, they pay that monthly so that there is no big wow at the end of the month, right? Or at least homeowners associations that are financially solvent and understand, hey, we've got these things and uh, that's why we have a reserve study. We match that reserve study, right? Okay. Uh, we also talk about a credit score. So credit score is incredibly important because remember, mortgage interest rates and the ability to get a mortgage is based on risk, which is your credit score. Your credit score is risk. Uh, and eight, I think the highest score is what, 830, 820, 830, something like that. Uh, and uh, really the, the floor really is about 620 to get a, a mortgage. Yes, there are loan programs that you can get uh, with a credit score lower than that, you pay in mortgage interest rate. It's based on risk. So there are small things that you can do to get this up above 650 because there are different thresholds. Uh, you know, above 680, above 710 or 720. There are things you can do which then reduce your mortgage interest rate, which helps you save hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars every single year. Those are things that you need to plan for now. Okay. All right. Now you said, George, there's going to be a plan. Let's talk about that. So let's roll this bad boy over. So on top of uh, the link here is a little one sheet kind of walks you through the process. Hey, can I rent? Should I buy? What should I do? And it kind of walks you through what process, what should I do? All right. So what can you do today? If you say, George, oh gosh, you know, I just can't buy a house today. I'm like, okay, well, let's start this today. First thing, contact the lender, whether it's Dan Golden at Quarterstone or maybe it's uh, Julianne at Qualstar Credit Union. There's a couple of other lenders. We'll go ahead and we'll post those for you so you can reach out. There's no cost, there's no obligation. They will say, hey, based on your information today, a snapshot today, here's what you can afford, all right? Here's what your credit score is. And what you can do then is you can find out each month what you can afford financially. And then you can say, okay, all right, so this is what the bank says that I qualify for, but wow, man, I don't, I don't feel like I can pay that much, but I can pay this much. Let's say they, they say you qualify for $3,000 a month. You might say, oh, that is really steep on my budget. All right, but you know what? I can pay $2,400. I can pay that. I, I'm good with that. And then you can ask them, hey, on $2,400 a month, what kind of mortgage does that give me? What kind of house does that give me? Knowledge is power, right? So now, not only do you know what you qualify for, then you know how much you feel comfortable for, now you know how much of a home you can purchase based on today's interest rate, based on that interest rate, okay? All right, then you come down and you take your rent. You pay your rent, but let's say your rent is $1,000 a month and you said, I can afford $2,400 a month. You're gonna take $1,400 a month, you're gonna put it into your savings account, all right? The reason is, I call that payment acclimation. It acclimates you to the payment. Many of you have been out to a lake, and you've been on the dock or on the beach, and you look at the water and you go, oh, gosh, you know, and you put your foot in, you go, oh my God, that's cold. And then it's like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. You run and you jump in, whether it's the pool, the lake, you know, whatever. And at first you're like, wow, that's cold. 
And then all of a sudden it's, it's like, hey, you know, this is warm. This is cool. I can do this. It's the same thing with your payments. And that is what allows you mentally and financially to start preparing yourself because guess what? The bank is going to look at it. And you can say, hey, you know what? I've been looking to purchase a home for the last year. And so what I've done, and since we have last, uh, you know, spoken, I have actually taken what I feel like, you know, I feel comfortable with, and I've set that aside. Here's my rent, and here's the, what I've set aside. So I have acclimated. I am comfortable with this. In fact, now that I've done the $2,400, you know what? I can go to $2,600 pretty easy because now I've adjusted to this. All right. That is a good plan because then it allows you to be more effective when you're looking at homes because mentally you're prepared for it, right? Proper preparation meets opportunity and that is what allows you to purchase your home, all right? When we come down here, it also gives you time to work on your credit. There are small things you can do. In fact, you know, with today's technology, one of the most wicked cool things, uh, like Dan Golden and I, we talk about this one all the time, they have this program that actually tells you specifically which one of these items, which, which something or another on your credit report you need to work on or to change so that you can bump your credit score. And it tells you what it'll bump it by. It might be paying down a loan balance. It might be removing a credit card that you don't use. It might be, hey, get a credit card and use it. Uh, Paid off, right? Uh, and then that you know, those are small things that will build your credit report. Your what we call a credit bureau. There are three different ones. Remember, they take the middle or low score depending on who you're working with. All right, all right. So next thing is get in touch with the market. Our monthly market update and looking at what is available online will help you to become market smart. If you would like homes sent to you at no cost, no strings attached, that are in that price point so you can start to get an idea of what they look like, so you know when a good value comes up, let us know. We'll send it to you. There's no strings attached, all right? Uh, all you have to do is uh, put it up there in the corner and say, George, send me properties in Bellevue or send me properties in Kent, send me properties in Bothell. All right, so we'll just, we'll, we'll send you a list. And if you want it more frequently, fine. We'll put you on a daily or weekly update. Uh, it's simple enough. When the time is right, you'll have the knowledge in the market to be most successful, all right? So to start today, contact your lender, find out how much you qualify for, then consider how much do you feel comfortable paying, and then find out what the home value is, that price at today's rate that that is. It might be 500,000, might be 400,000. You might be shocked at how much of a home you can purchase or maybe not quite as much, but can be fixed by working on your credit score. All right. And then again, be on top of your market knowledge. This right there, it's going to be on a link. You're going to have easy access to it. Follow the format. Have any questions? Again, my name is George Moorhead. Post them up in the corner. Email me. Put a little comment down below. We'll get back to you. Again, there's no strings attached. This is super simple for you. The goal is, is to make you successful. Give you the home that you've always wanted to so you can start building as part of your retirement portfolio. In the meantime, you guys have an absolutely fabulous day. I will talk to you later, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.